The Portland Trailblazers have been on an incredible run. In the month of February, they are 8-3, and three, and they have done it in style. In their final game in the month of January, Damian Lillard ripped the heart right out of the Bulls, threw it on the ground, and stomped on it in one of the most dramatic regular season finishes in NBA history. And ever since then, it has been non-stop Dame time. So what has fueled this incredible stretch of Blazers basketball? What has been the driving force behind the Blazers awesome month of February? Well, that's what I'm here to discuss today. My last Blazers video on Gary Trent Jr. performed really well. So if you guys are enjoying the Blazers content, make sure to drop a like or even subscribe. Every subscriber for a small channel like mine makes a huge difference. So thanks to everyone who's been showing me all of the love. Now let's get into the video. What makes them so good? Well, to put it simply, Damian Lillard. Well, it's certainly more complicated than just that. But honestly, it's not any more complicated than just that. There have been other contributing factors to this team's success, but the bottom line is Dame Lillard. We'll discuss some of these other factors, however, before we really crack open the incredible run that Damian Lillard has been on. Sir Robert Covington has been playing impact defense for the Blazers in the month of February. Rocco is averaging 1.7 steals as well as 1.7 blocks. The Blazers defense is very clearly their biggest weakness and Covington is doing everything in his power to raise their ceiling on that end of the floor. Over the month of February, he has also been hitting on 41% of his threes and currently he is the perfect embodiment of the 3 and D wing. Gary Trent Jr. has continued his incredible run. He's scoring 19.3 a game in February. Trent has gone from a role player to a second star over the last month. He's getting just about 20 a game while shooting 45% from three. And finally, on a topic I am planning on expanding on in a separate standalone video, the Trailblazers have a guy who I think is a serious contender for sixth man of the year in Carmelo Anthony. In the month of February, Melo is putting up 15 points a game, which is just slightly over his season average. But more importantly, he has done so at a more efficient clip than usual. He is shooting 41.5% from three, and he's putting up five threes a game. So while his volume has gone up, his efficiency has as well. When a guy coming off the bench can mix this level of efficiency and volume, with Melo's level of clout, it makes an absolute game changer for opposing teams' defensive game plan. Now, while those guys have made significant contributions over the last month, nobody has made a more significant impact in the entire league than Damian Lillard. Dame this month is putting up 39 and 4. He's putting up almost a 30 point double double with assists every single night and while the points are obviously a tremendously important piece to this team's success it's how those points are coming that may be even more important namely when they're coming in this season damian lillard has appeared in 16 games where he registered clutch time minutes in the clutch which is defined as a game with less than five minutes to play with a score difference of five or less, Damian Lillard is shooting 58% from three. Yeah, 58%. If Dame shoots a three in the clutch, it is significantly more likely for it to go in than for it not to go in. The only players in the league with a higher clutch three-point percentage are Colin Sexton and Carl Anthony Towns, who have both appeared in just half the clutch games as Damian Lillard. Dame is shooting 100% from the free throw line 
in the clutch. So over 16 clutch games, he has missed literally zero free throws. Dame's overall clutch effective field goal percentage is 49%, and his clutch squared effective field goal percentage, which is essentially shots on buzzer beaters, he is shooting 85%. 85%. Simply put, Damian Lillard is living in Dame time all the time. Time and time and time again, Damian Lillard has propelled the Blazers to win after win after win. The Blazers, a team who lost two of their most important players in CJ McCollum and Yusuf Nurkic a month ago, have risen up to become a team in a battle for home court advantage and they've done so on the shoulders of the most clutch player in the NBA. Damian Lillard. So how can they improve? Well, the simplest answer is to get healthy. The team has improved its overall performance in the absence of two of its best players. Now this isn't because CJ McCollum and Yusuf Nurkic aren't good. Absolutely not. It's because right now the Blazers know that they're in survival mode. When Damian Lillard looks to his left, there's no C.J. McCollum to take the load off of him. There is Gary Trent Jr., but there's no C.J. McCollum. And Robert Covington knows there's no Nurkic behind him to protect the rim. So all the guys are playing above their level right now. They're going all out because they're missing these other two. That's why we've seen an improvement in performance. Not because the team doesn't need these guys. So the re-addition of CJ McCollum, an all-star caliber guard, who was having a particularly efficient season, will obviously provide a massive boost to the Blazers' offense. Yusuf Nurkic still has never really made it back 100% from his leg injury and then injured his wrist this year. Uh, well, Ennis Cantor has provided a beefy 13 and 13 in Nurk's absence, Cancer is far from a stellar defender. If Nurk comes back in shape and starts to round out looking a little more 100% than he was in the bubble or earlier in this season, he can certainly help bring back his signature defensive tenacity and should help the Blazers improve on what is their biggest weakness. Now, the possibility of a trade or free agent addition from the buyout market is always an interesting prospect. The Blazers could find themselves and most likely are going to find themselves being buyers at the deadline. I'm not exactly sure what a trade looks like coming out of Portland right now. Gary Trent Jr. is on an expiring deal and would have very, very high trade value right now. Anthony Simons has had a nice stretch as well and is far from essential for Portland to succeed. Wouldn't be super shocking to see either of those guys on the move. Also wouldn't be super shocking to see them both stay put. Now, in terms of what they would be looking to get back, I would certainly anticipate strong wing defenders to help them improve their overall rotations. And depending how hopeful the team is on the return of Yusuf Nurkic, they could also be looking to find a defensive big to help them in specific postseason matchups. Now, will it translate to the playoffs? Well, that's the million dollar question. I do think the Blazers are at a caliber that they could make a run at the Western Conference Finals. The idea of them beating the Nuggets or the Clippers or the Jazz on the back of an incredible Damian Lillard performance is definitely something I can envision. The Lakers, on the other hand, that is a tougher sell. Robert Covington and Derek Jones Jr. are both acceptable guys to guard LeBron, if LeBron even can be guarded at this point. But who on the roster is going to be the AD stopper? If the Lakers run out of lineup with AD at the four and you put Nurk on AD, you're going to leave someone undersized to try and guard Gasol. And even then, at his best, Nurk would have certainly been a solid anti-AD option, but we just haven't seen that out of him since the big injury. And Cantor certainly isn't going to clamp down on AD. It's really hard for me to talk myself into the Blazers being the Lakers, but I think they could best just about anyone else in the West in a playoff series. So what do you think? Do the Blazers have what it takes to give the Lakers a run? Can they keep playing at this pace? Is Dame the most clutch player in basketball? Let me know in the comments. Stay lit, and thanks for watching.